In this video we turn to a different kind of network problem and that's the idea of maximum flow. Let's start with an example. Perth and 2J are connected by roads. The numbers represent the maximum vehicle flow per hour for each section of the network. Find the maximum number of cars that can go from Perth to 2J in one hour, noting that vehicles can only travel in the direction of the arrows. The number 6 might represent 600 cars per hour, which is the maximum number of cars that the road can handle travelling down at each hour. From Midland to 2J, the number is 15, or 1500 cars per hour. This could be because the road is wider, possibly has more lanes, and it looks like you might be able to get 1500 cars moving from Perth to 2J along this road. But the problem is that Perth to Midland can only handle 600 cars per hour. So the maximum flow along this entire route will in fact be only 600 cars per hour. And effectively what that means is that 15 minus 6 equals 900 cars per hour of unused capacity on that road. What if we add a couple of other routes? What's the maximum flow from Perth to 2J now? Well, all of the numbers we've added are larger than the 6, but the smallest number on the second path is a 9. So the maximum flow along this route is only going to be 900 cars per hour. So we would have an unused capacity of 900 cars between Pinjarra and 2J, and 21 minus 9 is 12, so an unused capacity of 1,200 cars along that route. Not forgetting that if we travel the other way, we have 900 cars per hour of unused capacity. Now here, of course, I have two routes. So I can indeed have 600 cars per hour travelling directly from Perth to 2J through Midland, and a further 900 cars per hour travelling through Mandura and Pinjara to 2J. So by adding an extra pathway I have increased the maximum flow that is possible. What if we add one more route? The road from Perth to Mandura can still handle a further 1200 cars per hour and now 700 cars per hour can travel between Mandura and Midland. The road from Midland to 2J can handle 700 of those, leaving an unused capacity of 200. Now you may be able to see that the maximum traffic flow from Perth to 2J is now 2200 cars per minute. But we haven't been entirely systematic. So what we need to do is to rethink how to do this example and how to do a more complicated example. Before we move on though, just a point about terminology. Perth will be called the source, the origin of traffic flow, and 2J, which is our destination, is known as the sink. Now the real fun starts. We've got an example here, and what we need to do is develop a systematic way to work out the maximum flow. We've got an arrangement of water pipes, and the numbers represent the capacity in litres per minute between each node of the network. On the left, node A is the source, and on the right, node G is the sink. So water is flowing from A through the network to G, and we need to work out the maximum possible flow. All right, so we're going to be systematic, and Initially we're going to choose the path along the top of the diagram and we're going to work out the numbers for that one. So as before we look for the smallest number and that's the 370 which we cross out. And we're going to subtract 370 from that which leaves 0. And now we subtract 370 from each of the other numbers on that path which I've gone ahead and done. Now we should note the maximum capacity for that path of the network. So looking at this diagram, 
we can see that we can't push any more through CD, but we can go from C to F and then back to D because between D and G we have 30 litres per minute of unused capacity. So let's select the second pathway, A, B, C, F, D, G. Here's the numbers we're looking at. And along this pathway, we're going to look for the smallest number, which is 30. We're going to subtract that from every number, starting with 30 minus 30 equals 0 between D and G. The unused capacity is now shown for each of the other pipes. Make sure you record the maximum flow for that pathway before you move on to the next step. Now we look to see where we have pipes heading into the sink with unused capacity and we can see here that we have the pipe FG so we have some unused capacity along ABCF which we can push through that one so the smallest number along that route is 100 between B and C so we subtract 100 from all of the other numbers along A, B, C, F, G and we note that we have a maximum flow of 100. But just before we go on, notice that we have 60 litres per minute of unused capacity between F and D which can now never be used because it's got nowhere to flow. And similarly I can't use the 50 between C and F because B and C has no more capacity. But I'm also looking at the pipe between B and F, which can carry 200 litres per minute. So let's take that pathway first. So A, B, F, G. The smallest number there is the 200. So I subtract that from each of the numbers and record the maximum flow for A, B, F, G, which equals 200. I've got no more capacity left between B and F. Unfortunately, I've got no more capacity for the pipe BC. So my 50 unused capacity between A and B can never be used. We've got one pathway left now, and that's A, E, F, G. Smallest number is 350, which I subtract from the other numbers. And my maximum capacity, I note, and now I just add up those numbers. How do I know it's time to add up the numbers? It's because there are no more pipes leading into the sink that can carry any more capacity. So I can't go any further with this problem. And the maximum flow now is just found by adding up those totals, which is 1,050. In the second part of the problem, we're going to write down the actual flow for each of the pipes. So I need my first diagram as a reference. And what we're looking for now is the difference between the capacity of the pipe and the unused capacity that I may have remaining. So starting with pipe AB, I go 750 minus 50 unused capacity equals 700. For BC, I have used all of the 500 litres per minute capacity, same for CD, maximum of 370, same for DG, maximum of 400. B and F, maximum of 200. A and E, here I could have had up to 680, but I've got 330 unused capacity. So 680 minus 330 is 350. 400 minus 50 gives 350 between E and F and I've used my maximum of 650 between F and G. Between C and F, the difference between 180 and 50 unused capacity is 130 litres per minute. One more, between D and F, 90 minus 60 equals 30. Now I've got a number on every arc, so I should be done. Now it's time to check that the numbers actually work. So going into my sink, I have 400 plus 650, which of course equals 1,050 litres per minute, which is the number I expected. 
On the other side, looking at the source, I have 1,050 litres per minute leaving the source, and those numbers should match. And if they do, you can be fairly confident that you've got everything correct. Also note that if you look at any particular node, the flow coming into the node, in this case 500, should equal the flow leaving the node, 370 plus 130 equals 500. You can have a quick look around your diagram to make sure that all of your numbers are correct. The first time I did this one, I made one small mistake, which I was able to pick up by checking the numbers. Alright, so these can be fun. They are reasonably complicated, but as always, try a few examples, and once your confidence is up, you can be sure that you'll do well with these types of problems in future.